Hey, welcome back to the Quant Reasoning channel. I'm really excited about this video. I've actually been planning to do this for a while, but I finally got around to it. This is going to be a video about verbal reasoning, not quant reasoning. And I'm going to show you here today what, in my opinion, is the best way to improve one's verbal reasoning. Now, this is going to be particularly useful for sentence correction, but it's also a very important skill for reading comprehension and critical reasoning. So let's jump right into it. I have here an official reading comprehension passage from one of the official guides. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go sentence by sentence and do a structural analysis of each of the sentences. Now that's really important for reading comprehension because if you can't tell the structure of the sentence, well, then you can't comprehend it. But it's also really useful for sentence correction, especially for the big items like subject verb agreement and of course, sentence structure. Okay, so here we go. Scientists have been puzzled. And that's the main clause here of this first sentence. Scientists have been puzzled by something. So we've got a subject and we have a verb. Now, what have they been puzzled by? The seeming disparity between two things. How do I know that it's two things? Well, because if it was more than two things, you couldn't use the word between, you'd use the word among. So it's two things, and I'm prepared now to read what are those two things. So thing number one is models of global warming based on greenhouse gas emissions. And the word that I was waiting for is the word and. So structurally speaking, the word and goes together with the word between. So between X and Y. So item number two is actual climatological data. Okay, so that's the end of the first sentence. We had a subject, we had a verb. Uh, I didn't see any pronouns there, but when you're doing this exercise at home, I suggest looking both for the subject and verb pairs and for any pronouns and for anything else that jumps out at you. For example, in this case, we had the between X and Y type structure. Okay, so second sentence. In short, the world is, so that's our subject verb, the world is not warming up, really warming is part of that verb, right? Because we have a helping verb is warming. That's your ing verb. And just as a reminder, an ing word is only a verb if it has a helping verb in front of it. And that is in fact the case here. So the world is not warming up as much as these models have predicted. So we have here another subject and verb. The subject is these models. Uh, you could argue that this is a pronoun, right? So these models is referring to what? Uh, must be these models. By the way, going back to that first sentence, because, I, because we identified that pairing of the word between and the word and, we can tell that actual climatological data is not a model. Now, we could also tell that if you know anything about modeling and... <laughs> Uh, and what model means, right? Model is basically the opposite of actual, uh, but you can also tell just using grammar. So if you didn't know, if you didn't fully understand the meaning, you can use grammar to help you understand that on the one hand, we have models. On the other hand, we have actual climatological data. And again, I could tell that because of the pairing of between and and. So item number one and item number two. And then we said we have another subject and verb here. These models as the subject have predicted is a present perfect verb. Okay, so, so far we've done two sentences into this reading comprehension passage. And again, I, I'm using this. Uh, the reason I use an official GMAT reading comprehension passage is because I know that it's going to abide by the GMAT rules for sentence correction. In the early 1990s, here comes the clause. Pat Michaels sought, so that's subject verb, Pat, Pat Michaels, some person, sought to explain this disparity. And just a, a reminder, to explain is not a verb. Explain on its own could be a verb, but when you have the preposition to in front of it, this is called an infinitive, it is not a verb. So to explain this disparity, again, you could argue that this is a pronoun, it's referring to what disparity? Oh, the one that we had in the first sentence. Now taking this away from grammar just for a moment and focusing on meaning, I want you to ask yourself, why did the author use the word seeming? 
I'm going to go ahead and argue that the author's use of the word seeming implies that the author is hinting that maybe this disparity isn't real. There appears to be a disparity, there's a seeming disparity, but perhaps we're going to find out later in the passage why this disparity actually isn't really a disparity. So again, Pat Michaels sought to explain this disparity, suggesting, so we've got a comma ing, if you've been studying sentence correction for a while, you'll recognize this as an adverbial modifier. It's a present participle immediately after a comma, and it's supposed to describe the preceding clause. So this is describing the manner in which Pat Michaels sought to explain. So in what way did he seek to explain this disparity? Suggesting that, and now we're going to have another clause after the word that. What did he suggest? He suggested that he or she, I should say, Pat could be a, a female, sulfate emissions had a cooling effect. So there's the verb. So sulfate emissions had. You have a little prepositional phrase in there just to tell us what particular sulfate emissions we're talking about. We're talking about the ones in the industrial areas. Uh, those sulfate emissions had a cooling effect, thus temporarily retarding, that means slowing down, global warming. So there's no clause there, this is just a cause and effect situation, and I know it's a cause and effect situation thanks to the word thus. Okay, next sentence. Michaels, there's a subject, later came, that's the verb, here's another infinitive, to doubt, this idea. What's this idea referring to? I presume the idea that this is referring to is this. That's the idea. That sulfate emissions in industrial areas had a cooling effect. So he later came to doubt this idea, however, I think the reason we have the word however is because he's doubting, he or she is doubting the very idea that he or she suggested. So he or she suggested some idea and later came to doubt that idea. That's why we have the word however, which implies some sort of uh, contradiction or some sort of surprise. Right? We're surprised that this person suggested something and then came to doubt that very same thing. I'd like to point out that uh, as you've probably noticed, I'm really focusing on certain words, such as the word thus and the word however. And the reason I'm focused on those words, I should also point out the word seeming, right? I talked about that word as well. These are words that uh, give us a window into the author's state of mind or into the author's opinion, into the author's purpose. Uh, and that's really the point of verbal reasoning. The reason we have the word reasoning in there is because uh, every, um, every piece of text has some reason for why it was written. And in many cases, the texts themselves talk about reasons for different phenomena. And so that's kind of how it all comes together. So we said, uh, Michaels later came to doubt this idea, however, pointing out, so this is again a ing coming after a comma, describing uh, the, the way in which Michaels came to doubt this idea, right? Describing that. So he's pointing out that since, here's the, the word since, similar to the word thus, it describes some kind of cause and effect. Since most sulfate is emitted, so we have most sulfate as the subject and is emitted as the verb. So since this, is emitted in the northern hemisphere, comma, and here we get the effect. So we have cause, here's the cause, and here comes the effect after the comma. Notice we have a possessive pronoun here, it's, referring to whose cooling influence? Whose cooling influence? The sulfate. The sulfate's cooling influence should be largely limited, so I'm going to say that's a verb. The subject, of course, is the sulfate's cooling influence. So the sulfate's cooling influence is the subject. Here's the verb, should be largely limited to that hemisphere. I don't want to make this video too long. I'm going to stop here. Um, would love to hear from you all in the comments 
uh, what you thought of this exercise, are you going to try this on your own, what issues you might run into when you're trying this on your own. And if there's a demand for it, I'll make another video finishing off this passage and maybe future videos uh, with more passages as well. Now, according to YouTube's statistics, there is a 98% chance that you haven't yet hit the thumbs up button below the video. And there's a 70% chance that you're not subscribed to this channel. Now, those are two free ways in which you can support this channel. So uh, I'd really appreciate it if you take just a couple of seconds to click that thumbs up button and click the subscribe if you're not yet subscribed. There's also a little bell there that you can click to get notified as I publish new videos. So until next time, see you later. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.